I wake up at about half past six, get myself some coffee, and between about seven in the morning and ten in the morning, I just sort of drink the coffee and, and something it sort of opens up something in the brain and I can write incredibly well for three hours. And then at about ten o'clock in the morning, it begins to drain away. And for the rest of the day, I'm desperately trying to pull anything decent out of my brain. Nice to have all your stuff in it. It's nice to have all the things that mean something to you, like the little trinkets and mementos I picked up while on the travels. Um, and little reminders. That's the other thing. When, you, when you're writing on your own too much uh, in a room, you start to forget that anything else exists and you just become this kind of wolf child, you know, like Caspar Hauser that was, you know, raised by wolves and then you go out into, into the open air for the first time and, you know, you're sort of recoiling from the human race. And, and, it's, and you know, that's what happens to me when I'm writing too much. Sometimes I'm slightly worried that this room is like a sort of... Um, it's like an altar to me because <laughs> I've got my book covers and, and um, photographs of myself. There's me with Ian Paisley. Uh, there's me staying at a goat. You know what, I've got one thing too many of myself in this room. I've got a poster out behind the door that says in huge letters, meet John Ronson. And as I put it up, I thought, this is, this is too much now. I've got to, I've got to tone down the amount, of, um, the amount of myself that's in this room. Um, but I've also got, I've got, um, I've got a weapon um, called a predator, um, which was invented by a martial arts instructor at Camp Pendleton in San Diego called Pete Brusso. And what you do, you can, you can hurt the hell out of people in, in a number of different ways with this. You can stick somebody's finger in it and then just tug, and you can like gouge out an eye. You know, the guy who invented this is like a real maestro of violence. Anyway, he, he liked what I'd written about him so much in The Men Who Stare at Goats uh, that he actually named one of these weapons after me. He called it the Ronsonator. And uh, now special forces uh, and the 82nd Airborne in Iraq are carrying um, Ronsonators uh, to, to inflict um, agony on insurgents, um, which isn't great now I think about it. So this is me and Robbie Williams looking for UFOs in Laughlin, Nevada. Uh, he called me up completely out of the blue saying he wanted to have paranormal adventures and we were going to spend a night in a haunted house and we were going to go on a psychic cruise but we ended up meeting alien abductees in Laf Laughlin, Nevada. It was a great weird adventure that we had, you know, like Mulder and Scully or uh, Danger Mouse and Penfold. Um, <sighs> here's me with the clan. Um, I used to have terrible nightmares as a child of being lynched by the clan. But in fact, when you meet them, as you can tell they're sweet, and there's me in the middle. That's in Harrison, Arkansas. So it's nice, you know, when you die, this is what you've got, isn't it? You've got these, um, these little um, bits of proof that you had, you had great adventures. And in the end, that's, that's, I think, what matters. You had great adventures and then you wrote them well.